Chapter twenty one of Book One of Prior Analytics by Aristotle, translated by Octavius Owen. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Geoffrey Edwards. Chapter twenty one of Syllogisms with One Proposition Contingent and the Other Simple in the Third Figure if however one premise signifies the in esse but the other the contingent the conclusion will be that a thing is contingent to and not that it is present with another and there will be a syllogism the term subsisting in the same manner as the previous ones for first let them be affirmative and let a be in every c but b contingent with every c b c then being converted there will be the first figure and the conclusion will be that a is contingently present with a certain b for when one premise in the first figure signifies the contingent the conclusion also was contingent in like manner if the proposition b c b of the simple in esse but the proposition a c be contingent and if a c be negative but b c affirmative and either of them be pure in both ways the conclusion will be contingent since again there arises the first figure now it has been shown that where one premise in that figure signifies the contingent the conclusion also will be contingent if however the negative be annexed to the minor premise or both be assumed as negative through the propositions laid down themselves there will not indeed be a syllogism but by their conversion there will be as in the former cases nevertheless if one premise be universal and the other particular yet both affirmative or the universal negative but the particular affirmative there will be the same mode of syllogisms for all are completed by the first figure so that it is evident there will be a syllogism of the contingent and not of the in esse if however the affirmative be universal and the negative particular the demonstration will be per impossible for let b b with every c and a happen not to be with a certain c it is necessary then that a should happen not to be with a certain b since if a is necessarily with every b but b is assumed to be with every c a will necessarily be with every c which was demonstrated before but by hypothesis a happens not to be with a certain c when both premises are assumed indefinite or particular there will not be a syllogism and the demonstration is the same as in universals and by the same terms example one something white is slash is not an animal it happens that something white is slash is not a man it is necessary that every man should be an animal something white is slash is not a horse it happens that something white is slash is not a man it is necessary that no man should be a horse. It happens that something white is slash is not an animal. Something white is slash is not a man. It is necessary that every man should be an animal. It happens that some animal is slash is not a horse something white is slash is not a man 
it is necessary that no man should be a horse. Chapter 22 of syllogisms with one premise necessary and the other contingent in the third figure. If one premise be necessary, but the other contingent, the terms being affirmative, there will be always a syllogism of the contingent. But when one is affirmative, but the other negative, if the affirmative be necessary, there will be a syllogism of the contingent non in esse. If, however, it be negative, there will be one both of the contingent and of the absolute non in esse. There will not, however, be a syllogism of the necessary non in esse, as neither in the other figures. Let, then, first the terms be affirmative, and let A be necessarily with every C, but B happen to be with every C. Therefore, since A is necessarily with every C, but C is contingent to a certain B, A will also be contingently and not necessarily with some certain B. For thus it is concluded in the first figure. It can be similarly proved if B, C be assumed as necessary, but A, C contingent. Example 1. It happens that every man is white. It is necessary that every man should be an animal. Therefore, it happens that some animal is white. It happens that every man is white. It is necessary that some animal should be a man. Therefore, it happens that some animal is white. Again, let one premise be affirmative, but the other negative and let the affirmative be necessary. Let also A happen to be with no C, but let B necessarily be with every C. Again, there will be the first figure. For the negative premise signifies the being contingent. It is evident, therefore, that the conclusion will be contingent. For when the premises were thus in the first figure, the conclusion was also contingent. But if the negative premise be necessary, the conclusion will be that it is contingent, not to be with something, and that it is not with it. For let A be supposed necessarily not with C, but contingent to every B. Then the affirmative proposition B, C being converted, there will be the first figure and the negative premise will be necessary. But when the premises are thus, it results that A happens not to be with a certain C, and that it is not with it. Wherefore, it is necessary also that A should not be with a certain B. When, however, the minor premise is assumed negative, there will be a syllogism, if that be contingent by the premise being converted as in the former cases. But if it be necessary, there will not be, for it is necessary to be with every, and happens to be with none. Let the terms of being with every individual be, quotes, sleep, a, quote, sleeping horse, close quote, quotes, man, of being with none, quotes, sleep, a, quote, Waking horse, close quote. Quotes, man. Example 2. It happens that every man sleeps. It is necessary that no man should be a sleeping horse. It is necessary that every sleeping horse should sleep. It happens that every man sleeps. It is necessary that no man should be a waking horse. It is necessary that no waking horse should sleep. It will happen in the same way if one term be joined to the middle universally, but the other partially. For both being affirmative, there will be a syllogism of the contingent, and not of the absolute. Also, when the one is assumed as negative, 
but the other affirmative and the affirmative is necessary but when the negative is necessary the conclusion will also be of the not being present with for there will be the same mode of demonstration whether the terms are universal or not universal since it is necessary that the syllogisms be completed by the first figure so that it is requisite that the same should result in these as in those when however the negative universally assumed is joined to the less extreme if it be contingent there will be a syllogism by conversion but if it be necessary there will not be and this may be shown in the same mode as in universals and by the same terms example three it happens that some man sleeps it is necessary that no man should be a sleeping horse it is necessary that every sleeping horse should sleep it happens that some man sleeps it is necessary that no man should be a waking horse it is necessary that no waking horse should be asleep wherefore in this figure it is evident when and how there will be a syllogism and when of the contingent and when of the absolute all also it is clear are imperfect and are perfected by the first figure chapter twenty three it is demonstrated that every syllogism is completed by the first figure that the syllogisms then in these figures are completed by the universal syllogisms in the first figure and are reduced to these is evident from what has been said but that in short every syllogism is thus will now be evident when it shall be shown that every syllogism is produced by some one of these figures it is then necessary that every demonstration and every syllogism should show either something in essay or non in essay and this either universally or partially moreover either ostensively or by hypothesis a part however of that which is by hypothesis is produced per impossible therefore let us first speak of the ostensive syllogisms and when these are shown it will be evident also in the case of those leading to the impossible and generally of those by hypothesis if then it is necessary to syllogize a of b either as being with or as not being with we must assume something of something if then a be assumed of b that which was from the first proposed will be assumed to be proved but if a be assumed of c but c of nothing nor anything else of it nor of a there will be no syllogism for there is no necessary result from assuming one thing of one so that we must take another premise if then a be assumed of something else or something else of a or of c there is nothing to hinder a syllogism it will not however appertain to b from the assumptions nor when c is predicated of something else and that of another and this last of a third if none of these belong to b neither thus will there be a syllogism with reference to b since in short we say that there never will be a syllogism of one thing in respect of another unless a certain middle is assumed which refers in some way to each extreme in predication for a syllogism is simply from premises but that which pertains to this in relation to that is from premises belonging to this in relation to that but it is impossible to assume a premise relating to b if we neither affirm nor deny anything of it or again of a in relation to b if we assume nothing common but affirm or deny certain peculiarities of each hence a certain middle of both must be taken which unites the predications if there shall be a syllogism of one in relation to the other now if it is necessary to assume something common to both this happens in a threefold manner 
since we either predicate A of C and C of B, or C of both, or both of C. But these are the before mentioned figures. It is evident that every syllogism is necessarily produced by some one of these figures, for there is the same reasoning. If A be connected with B, even through many media, for the figure in many media will be the same. Wherefore, that all ostensive syllogisms are perfected by the above-named figures is clear. Also, that those per impossible are so perfected will appear from these, for all syllogisms concluding per impossible collect the false, but they prove by hypothesis the original proposition, when contradiction being admitted some impossibility results. As for instance, that the diameter of a square is incommensurate with the side, because a common measure being given, the odd would be equal to the even. They collect, then, that the odd would be equal to the even, but show from hypothesis that the diameter is incommensurate, since a falsity occurs by contradiction. This, then, it is to syllogize per impossible, namely, to show an impossibility from the original hypothesis, so that, as by reasonings leading to the impossible, an ostensive syllogism of the false arises, but the original proposition is proved by a hypothesis, and we have before said about ostensive syllogisms that they are perfected by these figures. It is evident that syllogisms also per impossible will be formed through these figures. Likewise, all others which are by hypothesis, for in all there is a syllogism of that which is assumed, but the original proposition is proved by confession, or some other hypothesis. Now, if this is true, it is necessary that every demonstration and syllogism should arise through the three figures before named, and this being shown, it is manifest that every syllogism is completed in the first figure, and is reduced to universal syllogisms in it. Chapter 24 Of the quality and quantity of the premises in syllogisms Of the conclusion Moreover, it is necessary in every syllogism that one term should be affirmative, and one universal, for without the universal there will not be a syllogism, or one not pertaining to the thing proposed, or the original question will be the subject of petition. For let it be proposed that pleasure from music is commendable. If then any one should require it to be granted that pleasure is commendable, and did not add all pleasure, there would not be a syllogism. But if that a certain pleasure is so, if indeed it is a different pleasure, it is nothing to the purpose. But if it is the same, it is a petitio principii. This will, however, be more evident in diagrams. For instance, let it be required to show that the angles at the base of an isosceles triangle are equal. Let the lines A, B, be drawn to the center of a circle. If then he assumes the angle A, C, to be equal to the angle B, D, not in short requiring it to be granted that the angles of semicircles are equal, and again that C is equal to D, not assuming the whole angle of the section, if besides he assumes that equal parts being taken from equal whole angles, the remaining angles E, F are equal, he will beg the original question, unless he assumes that if equals are taken from equals, the remainders are equal. Wherefore, in all syllogisms, we must have an universal. Universal is also shown from all universal terms, but the particular in this or that way, so that if the conclusion be universal, the terms must of necessity be universal. But if the terms be universal, the conclusion may happen not to be universal. It appears also that in every syllogism, either both premises or one of them must be similar to the conclusion. 
i mean not only in its being affirmative or negative but in that it is either necessary or absolute or contingent we must also have regard to other modes of predication in a word then it is shown when there will and will not be a syllogism also when it is possible and when perfect and that when there is a syllogism it must have its terms according to some one of the above modes chapter twenty five every syllogism consists of only three terms and of two premises it appears that every demonstration will be by three terms and no more unless the same conclusion should result through different arguments as e through a b and through c d or through a b a c and b c for there is nothing to prevent many media subsisting of the same conclusions but these being many there is not one syllogism but many syllogisms or again when each of the propositions a b is assumed by syllogism as a through d e and again b through f g or when the one is by induction but the other by syllogism thus in this manner indeed there are many syllogisms for there are many conclusions as a and b and c and if there are not many but one it is thus possible that the same conclusion may arise through many syllogisms but in order that c may be proved through a b it is impossible for let the conclusion be e collected from a b c d it is then necessary that some one of these should be assumed with reference to something else as a whole but another as a part for this has been shown before that when there is a syllogism some of the terms should necessarily thus subsist let then a be thus with reference to b from these there is a certain conclusion which is either e or c or d or some other different from these now if e is concluded the syllogism would be from a b alone but if c d are so as that the one is universal and the other particular something also will result from these which will either be e or a or b or something else different from these and if e is collected or a or b there will be either many syllogisms or as it was shown possible the same thing will happen to be collected through many terms if however anything else different from these is collected there will be many syllogisms unconnected with each other but if c is not so with respect to d as to produce a syllogism they will be assumed to no purpose except for the sake of induction or concealment or something of the sort still if from a b not e but some other conclusion is produced and from c d either one of these or something different from these many syllogisms arise yet not of the subject for it was supposed that the syllogism is of e if again there is no conclusion from c d it will happen that they are assumed in vain and the syllogism is not of the primary problem so that it is evident that every demonstration and every syllogism will be through three terms only this then being apparent it is also clear that a syllogism consists of two premises and no more 
for three terms are two premises unless something is assumed over and above as we observed at first for the perfection of the syllogisms hence it appears that in the syllogistic discourse in which the premises through which the principal conclusion is collected are not even for it is requisite that some of the former conclusions should be premises this discourse is either not syllogistically constructed or has required more than is necessary to the thesis when then the syllogisms are taken according to the principal propositions every syllogism will consist of propositions which are even but of terms which are odd for the terms exceed the premises by one and the conclusions will be half part of the premises when however the conclusion results through prosyllogisms or through many continued middles as a b through c d the multitude of terms in like manner will exceed the premises by one for the term interpolated will be added either externally or in the middle but in both ways it will happen that the intervals are fewer than the terms by one but the propositions are equal to the intervals the former indeed will not always be even but the latter odd but alternately when the propositions are even the terms are odd but when the terms are even the propositions are odd for together with the term one proposition is added wherever the term is added hence since the propositions were even but the terms odd it is necessary they should change when the same addition is made but the conclusions will no longer have the same order neither with respect to the terms nor to the propositions for one term being added conclusions will be added less than the pre-existent terms by one because to the last term alone there is no conclusion made but to all the rest e g if d is added to a b c two conclusions are immediately added the one to a and the other to b the same occurs in the other cases also if the term be inserted in the middle after the same manner for it will not make a syllogism to one term alone so that the conclusions will be many more than the terms and than the propositions end of chapter twenty five recording in memory of mitchell edwards twenty six of book one of prior analytics by aristotle translated by octavius owen this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by geoffrey edwards chapter twenty six on the comparative difficulty of certain problems and by what figures they are proved since we have those particulars with which syllogisms are conversant and what is their quality in each figure and in how many ways demonstration takes place it is also manifest to us what kind of problem is difficult and what easy of proof for that which is concluded in many figures and through many cases is more easy but what is in fewer figures and by fewer cases is more difficult an universal affirmative then is proved through the first figure alone and by this in one way only but a negative both through the first and through the middle through the first in one way but through the middle in two ways the particular affirmative again through the first and through the last in one way through the first figure but in three ways through the last lastly the particular negative is proved in all the figures but in the first in one way in the middle in two ways and in the last in three ways hence it appears most difficult to construct an universal affirmative but most easy to subvert it in short universals are easier to subvert than particulars because the former are subverted whether a thing is present with nothing or is not with a certain thing of which the one 
namely the not being with a certain thing is proved in all the figures and the other the being with nothing is proved in two the same mode also prevails in the case of negatives for the original proposition is subverted whether a thing is with every or with a certain individual now this was in two figures in particular problems there is one way of computation either by showing a thing to be with every or with no individual and particular problems are easier of construction for they are in more figures and through more modes in short we ought not to forget that it is possible to confute universal mutually through particular problems and these through universal yet we cannot construct universal through particular but the latter may be through the former at the same time that it is easier to subvert than to construct is plain in what manner then every syllogism arises through how many terms and premises how they subsist with reference to each other also what sort of problem may be proved in each figure and what in many and in fewer modes may be gathered from what has been said chapter twenty seven of the invention and construction of syllogisms we must now describe how we may always obtain a provision of syllogisms for a proposed question and in what way we may assume principles about each for perhaps it is not only requisite to consider the production of syllogisms but also to possess the power of forming them of all beings then some are of such a nature as not to be truly predicated universally of anything else as quotes, cleon and quotes, callius that which is singular and that which is sensible but others are predicated of these for each of these is man and animal some again are predicated of others but others not previously of these lastly there are some which are themselves predicated of others and others of them as quotes, man is predicated of callius and quotes, animal of man that some things therefore are naturally adapted to be predicated of nothing is clear for of sensibles each is almost of such a sort as not to be predicated of anything except accidentally for we sometimes say that that white thing is socrates and that the object approaching is callias but that we must stop somewhere in our upward progression we will again show for the present let this be admitted of these things then we cannot point out another predicate except according to opinion but these may be predicated of others nor can singulars be predicated of others but others of them it appears however that those which are intermediate are capable in both ways of demonstration for they may be predicated of others and others of them and arguments and speculations are almost all conversant with these still it is requisite to assume the propositions about each thing thus in the first place the subject by hypothesis the definitions and such peculiarities as exist of the thing next whatever things are consequent to the thing and which the thing follows lastly such as cannot be in it those however which it cannot be in are not to be assumed because of the conversion of the negative we must also distinguish in the consequence what things belong to quote, what a thing is close quote, what are predicated as properties and what as accidents also of these those which are predicated according to opinion and those according to truth for the greater number any one has of these the quicker will he light upon a conclusion and the more true they are the more will he demonstrate we must too select not those which are consequent to a certain one but those which follow the whole thing e g not what follows a certain man but what follows every man for a syllogism consists of universal propositions 
if therefore a proposition is indefinite it is doubtful whether it is universal but when it is definite this is manifest so also we must select those things the whole of which a thing follows for the reason given above but the whole consequent itself need not be assumed to follow i say for instance it must not be assumed that every quotes, animal is consequent to quotes, man or every science to music but only that they are simply consequent as we set forth for the other is useless and impossible as that quote, every man close quote, is quote, every animal close quote, or that quote, justice is everything good close quote. to whatever subject a consequent is attached the sign quotes, every is added when however the subject is comprehended by a certain thing the consequence of which we must assume those which follow or which do not follow the universal we are not to select in these for they were assumed in those since whatever are consequent to quotes, animal are also consequent to quotes, man and as to whatever things are not absolutely present with in like manner but the properties of each thing must be taken for there are certain properties in species not common to genus since it is necessary that certain properties should be in different species nor are we to select those in regard to the universal which the thing comprehended follows as those which quotes, man follows ought not to be assumed to quotes, animal for it is necessary if animal follows man that it follows all these but these more properly belong to the selection of the antecedents of quotes, man we must also assume those which are generally consequent and antecedent for of general problems the syllogism also is from propositions all or some of which are general as the conclusion of each syllogism resembles its principles lastly we are not to select things consequent to all since there will not be composed a syllogism from them on account of a reason which will appear from what follows chapter twenty eight special rules upon the same subject those therefore who desire to confirm anything of a certain universal should look to the subject matter of what is confirmed in respect of which it happens to be predicated but of whatever ought to be predicated of this he should examine the consequence for if one of these happens to be the same one must necessarily be in the other but if it is to be proved that a thing is not present universally but particularly he must examine those which each follows for if any of these is the same to be particularly present is necessary but when the presence with nothing is necessary as to what it need not be present with we must look to those which cannot be present with it or on the contrary as regards that with which it is necessary not to be present we must look to those which cannot be with it but as to what ought not to be present to the consequence for whichever of these are identical it will happen that the one is in no other since sometimes a syllogism arises in the first and at other times in the middle figure if however the particular non in esse is to be proved that with which it ought not to be present and those which it follows are to be looked to but of that which ought not to be present those must be considered which it is impossible can be in it for if any of these be identical the particular non in essay is necessary what has been said however will perhaps be more clear thus let the consequence to a be b but let those to which it is consequent be c those again which cannot be in it d again let the things present with e be f and those to which it is consequent g lastly those which cannot be in it 
H. Now, if a certain C and a certain F are identical, it is necessary that A should be with every E, for F is present with every E, and A with every C, so that A is with every E. But if C and G are identical, A must necessarily be with a certain E, for A follows every C, and E every G. If, however, F and D are identical, A will be with no E from a prosyllogism, for since a negative is convertible and F is identical with D, A will be with no F, but F is with every E. Again, if B and H are the same, A will be with no E, for B is with every A, but with no E, for it was the same as H, and H was with no E. If D and G are identical, A will not be with a certain E, for A will not be with G, since it is not present with D. But G is under E, so that neither will it be with a certain E. Moreover, if B is identical with G, there will be an inverse syllogism, for G will be with every A, since B is with A, and E with B, for B is the same as G. Still, it is not necessary that A should be with every E, but it is necessary that it be with a certain E, because an universal predication may be converted into a particular one. Wherefore, we must evidently regard what has been mentioned as to each part of every problem, since all syllogisms are from these, but in consequence, and the antecedents of each thing, we must look to first elements, and to those which are for the most part universal. As in the case of E, we must look more to K, F, than only to F. But in the case of A, more to K, C, than to C only. For if A is present with k c it is also present with f and with e but if it is not consequent to this yet it may be consequent to f in like manner we must examine those which the thing itself is consequent to for if it follows the primary it also does those which are included under them and if it does not follow these yet it may those which are arranged under them. Speculation, then, plainly, consists of three terms, and two propositions, and all syllogisms are through the above-mentioned figures. For A is shown present with every E, when of C and F something identical may be assumed. Now, this will be the middle term, and A and e the extremes and there is the first figure but presence with a certain thing is shown when c and g are assumed identical and this is the last figure for g becomes the middle again presence with none when d and f are identical but thus also the first figure and the middle are produced, the first because A is with no F, since a negative is converted, 
but f is with every e and the middle because d is with no a but with every e not to be present also with a certain one is shown when d and g are the same and this is the last figure for a will be with no g and e with every g wherefore all syllogisms are evidently through the above named figures and we must not select those which are consequent to all because no syllogism arises from them as in short we cannot construct from consequence nor deduce a negative through an universal consequent for it must be in one and not in the other that other modes of speculation also as regards selection are useless for the construction of syllogism is apparent for instance if the consequence to each are identical or if those which a the predicate follows and which cannot be with e the subject or again those which cannot concur to be with either for no syllogism arises through these if then the consequence are identical as b and f the middle figure is produced having both premises affirmative but if those which a follows and which cannot be with e as c and h there will be the first figure having the minor premise negative again if those are identical which cannot be with either as d and h both propositions will be negative either in the first or in the middle figure thus however there will by no means be a syllogism we see moreover that we must assume in speculation things identical and not what are different or contrary first because our inspection is for the sake of the middle and we must take as a middle not what is different but what is identical next in whatever a syllogism happens to be produced from the assumptions of contraries or of those things which cannot be with the same all are reduced to the before named modes as if b and f are contraries or cannot be with the same thing if these are assumed there will be a syllogism that a is with no e this however does not result from them but from the above named mode for b is with every a and with no e so that b must necessarily be identical with a certain h again if b and g do not concur to be with the same thing it will follow that a will not be with a certain e and so there will be the middle figure for b is with every a and with no g so that b must necessarily be identical with some h for the impossibility of b and g being in the same thing does not differ from b being the same as a certain h since everything is assumed which cannot be with e from these observations then it is shown that no syllogism arises but if b and f are contraries b must necessarily be identical with a certain h and a syllogism arises through these nevertheless it occurs to persons thus inspecting that they look to a different way than the necessary from the identity of b and h escaping them chapter twenty nine the same method applied to other than categorical syllogisms syllogisms which lead to the impossible subsist in the same manner as ostensive for these also arise through consequence and those antecedents which each follows and the inspection is the same in both for what is ostensively demonstrated may be also syllogistically inferred per impossible and through the same terms 
and what is demonstrated per impossible may be also proved ostensively as that a is with no e for let it be supposed to be with a certain e therefore since b is with every a and a with a certain e b also will be with a certain e but it was present with none again it may be shown that a is with a certain e for if a is with no e but e is with every h a will be with no h but it was supposed to be with every h it will happen the same in other problems for always and in all things demonstration per impossible will be from consequence and from those which each follows in every problem also there is the same consideration whether a man wishes to syllogize ostensively or to lead to the impossible since both demonstrations are from the same terms as for example if a were shown to be with no e because b happens to be with a certain e which is impossible if it is assumed that b is with no e but with every a it is evident that a will be with no e again if it is ostensively collected that a is with no e to those who suppose that it is with a certain e it may be shown per impossible to be with no e the like will also occur in other cases for in all we must assume some common term different from the subject terms to which there will appertain a syllogism of the false so that this proposition being converted but the other remaining the same there will be an ostensive syllogism through the same terms but an ostensive syllogism differs from that per impossible because in the ostensive both premises are laid down according to truth but in that which leads to the impossible one is laid down falsely these things however will more fully appear by what follows when we come to speak of the impossible for the present let so much be manifest to us that both he who wishes to syllogize ostensively and per impossible must observe these things in other syllogisms indeed which are hypothetical such as those which are according to transumption or according to quality the consideration will be in the subject terms not in the original ones but in those taken afterwards but the mode of inspection will be the same but it is necessary also to consider and distinguish in how many ways hypothetical syllogisms arise each problem then is demonstrated thus and some of them we may infer syllogistically after another method for example universals by an hypothetical inspection of particulars for if c and h are the same and if e is assumed to be with h alone a will be with every e and again if d and h are the same and e is predicated of h alone it may be shown that a is with no e wherefore the inspection must clearly be in this way after the same manner both in the necessary and contingent for the consideration is the same and the syllogism both of the contingent and the absolute will be through terms the same in order in the contingent however we may assume things which are not with but which may be for it has been shown that by these a contingent syllogism is produced and the reasoning is similar in the case of the other predications from what has been said then it appears not only that it is allowable for all syllogisms to be formed in this but that they cannot be formed in any other way for every syllogism has been shown to originate through some one of the before named figures and these may not be constituted through any other than the consequence and antecedents of a thing 
for from these are the premises and assumption of the middle so that it is not admissible that a syllogism should be produced through other things chapter thirty the preceding method of demonstration applicable to all problems the way then of proceeding in all problems both in philosophy and in every art and discipline is the same for we must collect about each of them those things which are with and the subjects which they are with and be provided with as many as possible of these considering them also through three terms in one way subverting but in another constructing according to truth we reason from those which are truly described to be inherent but as regards dialectic syllogisms we must reason from probable propositions now the principles of universal syllogisms have been mentioned how they subsist and how we must investigate them that we may not direct our attention to everything which is said nor to constructing and subverting the same things nor both constructing universally or particularly nor subverting wholly or partially but look to things fewer and definite as to each however we must make a selection as of good or of science the peculiar principles indeed in every science are many hence it is the province of experience to deliver the principles of everything for instance i say that astrological experience gives the principles of astrological science for from phenomena being sufficiently assumed astrological demonstrations have thus been invented so also is it in every other art and science wherefore if things are assumed which exist in individuals it is now our duty readily to exhibit demonstrations for if as regards history nothing is omitted of what is truly present with things we shall be able about everything of which there is demonstration to discover and demonstrate this and to make that clear which is naturally incapable of demonstration universally then we have nearly shown how propositions ought to be selected but we have discussed this accurately in the treatise on dialectic end of chapter thirty recording in memory of mitchell edwards chapter thirty one of book one of prior analytics by aristotle translated by octavius owen this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by geoffrey edwards chapter thirty one upon division and its imperfection as to demonstration that the division through genera is but a certain small portion of the method specified it is easy to perceive for division is as it were a weak syllogism since it begs what it ought to demonstrate and always infers something of prior matter now this has first escaped the notice of all those who use it and they endeavour to show that demonstration about essence and the very nature of a thing is possible so that they neither perceive that those who divide happen to syllogize nor that it is possible in the manner we have said in demonstrations therefore when it is requisite to infer absolute presence the middle term by which the syllogism is produced must always be less and must not be universally predicated of the first extreme but on the contrary division takes the universal for the middle term for let animal be a mortal b immortal c and man of whom we ought to assume the definition d every animal then comprehends either mortal or immortal but this is that the whole of whatever may be a is either b or c again he who divides man admits that he is animal so that he assumes a to be predicated of d 
hence the syllogism is that every d is either b or c wherefore it is necessary for man to be either mortal or immortal yet it is not necessary that animal should be mortal but this is desired to be granted which was the very thing which ought to have been syllogistically inferred example one every animal is either mortal or immortal every man is an animal therefore every man is either mortal or immortal again taking a for mortal animal b for pedestrian c without feet and d for man in the same manner it assumes a to be either with b or c for every mortal animal is either pedestrian or without feet and that a is predicated of d for it has assumed that man is a mortal animal so that it is necessary that man should be either a pedestrian animal or without feet but that he is pedestrian is not necessary but they assume it and this again is what they ought to have proved example two every mortal animal is pedestrian or without feet every man is a mortal animal therefore every man is pedestrian or without feet after this manner it always happens to those who divide namely that they assume an universal middle and what they ought to show and the differences as extremes in the last place they assert nothing clearly as that it is necessary that this be a man or that the question necessarily is whatever it may be but they pursue every other way not apprehending the available supplies it is clear however that by this method we can neither subvert nor syllogistically infer anything of accident or property or genus or of those things of which we are a priori ignorant as to how they subsist as whether the diameter of a square be incommensurable for if it assumes every length to be either commensurable or incommensurable but the diameter of a square is a length it will infer that the diameter is either incommensurable or commensurable and if it assumes that it is incommensurate it will assume what it ought to prove wherefore that we cannot show for this is the way and by this we cannot do it let however the incommensurable or commensurable be a length b and diameter c example three every length is or is not commensurable every diameter is a length therefore every diameter is or is not commensurable it is clear then that this mode of inquiry does not suit every speculation neither is useful in those to which it especially appears appropriate wherefore from what sources and how demonstrations arise and what we must regard in every problem appear from what has been said chapter thirty two reduction of syllogisms to the above figures how then we may reduce syllogisms to the above named figures must next be told for this is the remainder of the speculation since if we have noticed the production of syllogisms and have the power of inventing them if moreover we analyze them when formed into the before named figures our original design will have been completed at the same time what has before been said will happen to be confirmed and be more evident that they are thus from what shall now be said for every truth must necessarily agree with itself in every respect first then we must endeavour to select the two propositions of a syllogism for it is easier to divide into greater than into less parts and composites are greater than the things of which they are composed next we must consider whether it is in a whole or in a part and if both propositions should not be assumed one self placing one of them 
for those who propose the universal do not receive the other which is contained in it neither when they write nor when they interrogate or propose these but omit those by which these are concluded and question other things to no purpose therefore we must consider whether anything superfluous has been assumed and anything necessary omitted and one thing is to be laid down and another to be removed until we arrive at two propositions for without these we cannot reduce the sentences which are thus the subjects of question now in some it is easy to see what is deficient but others escape us and seem to be syllogisms because something necessarily happens from the things laid down as if it should be assumed that essence not being subverted essence is not subverted but those things being subverted of which a thing consists what is composed of these is subverted also for from these positions it is necessary that a part of essence should be essence yet this is not concluded through the assumptions but the propositions are wanting again if because man exists it is necessary that animal should be and animal existing that there should be essence then because man exists essence must necessarily be but this is not yet syllogistically inferred for the propositions do not subsist as we have said they should but we are deceived in such because something necessary happens from the things laid down and because also a syllogism is something necessary the necessary however is more extensive than the syllogism for every syllogism is necessary but not everything necessary is a syllogism so that if anything occurs from certain positions we must not immediately endeavour to reduce but first assume two propositions then we must divide them into terms in this manner that term we must place as the middle which is said to be in both propositions for the middle must necessarily exist in both in all the figures if then the middle predicates and is predicated of or if it indeed predicates but another thing is denied of it there will be the first figure but if it predicates and is denied by something there will be the middle figure and if other things are predicated of it and one thing is denied but another is predicated there will be the last figure thus the middle subsists in each figure in a similar manner also if the propositions should not be universal for the determination of the middle is the same wherefore it is evident that in discourse where the same thing is not asserted more than once a syllogism does not subsist since the middle is not assumed as however we know what kind of problem is deduced in each figure in what the universal and in what the particular it is clear that we must not regard all the figures but that one which is appropriate to each problem and whatever things are deduced in many figures we may ascertain the figure of by the position of the middle chapter thirty three on error arising from the quantity of propositions it frequently happens then that we are deceived about syllogisms on account of the necessary conclusion as we have before observed and sometimes by the resemblance in the position of the terms which ought not to have escaped us thus if a is predicated of b and b of c there would appear a syllogism from such terms yet neither is anything necessary produced nor a syllogism for let a be that which always is b aristomenes the object of intellect and c aristomenes it is true then that a is with b for aristomenes is always the object of intellect but b is also with c for aristomenes is aristomenes the object of intellect but a is not with c for aristomenes is corruptible neither would a syllogism be formed from terms thus placed but the universal proposition a b must be assumed but this is false to think that every aristomenes who is the object of intellect 
always exists when aristomenes is corruptible again let c be michaelis b michaelis the musician a to die tomorrow b therefore is truly predicated of c since michaelis is michaelis the musician and a is truly predicated of b for michaelis the musician may die tomorrow but a is falsely predicated of c this case therefore is the same with the preceding for it is not universally true that michaelis the musician will die tomorrow and if this is not assumed there would be no syllogism this deception arises therefore from a small matter since we concede as if there were no difference between saying that this thing is present with that and this present with every individual of that chapter thirty four error arising from inaccurate exposition of terms deception will frequently occur from the terms of the proposition being improperly expounded as if a should be health b disease and c man for it is true to say that a cannot be with any b for health is with no disease and again that b is with every c for every man is susceptible of disease whence it would appear to result that health can be with no man now the reason of this is that the terms are not rightly set out in expression since those words which are significant of habits being changed there will not be a syllogism as if the word quotes well were taken instead of quotes health and the word quotes ill instead of quotes disease since it is not true to say that to be well cannot be present with him that is ill now this not being assumed there is no syllogism except of the contingent which indeed is not impossible for health may happen to be with no man again in the middle figure there will likewise be a falsity for health happens to be with no disease but may happen to be with every man so that disease shall be with no man in the third figure however falsity occurs by the contingent for it is possible that health and disease science and ignorance in short contraries shall be with the same individual but it is impossible that they should be present with each other this however differs from the preceding observations since when many things happen to be present with the same individual they also happen to be so with each other evidently then in all these cases deception arises from the setting forth of the terms as if those are changed which relate to the habits there is no falsity and it is therefore apparent that in such propositions what relates to habit must always be exchanged and placed for a term instead of habit chapter thirty five middle not always to be assumed as a particular definite thing it is not always necessary to seek to expound the terms by a name since there will often times be sentences to which no name is attached wherefore it is difficult to reduce syllogisms of this kind but we shall sometimes happen to be deceived by such a search for example because a syllogism is of things immediate for let a be two right angles b a triangle c an isosceles triangle a then is with c through b but no longer with b through anything else for a triangle has of itself two right angles so that there will not be a middle of the proposition a b which is demonstrable the middle then must clearly not thus be always assumed as if it were a particular definite thing but sometimes a sentence which happens to be the case in the instance adduced chapter thirty six on the arrangement of terms according to nominal appellation 
and of propositions according to case. For the first to be in the middle, and the latter in the extreme, it is unnecessary to assume as if they were always predicated of each other, or in like manner, the first of the middle, and this in the last, and also likewise in the case of non in esse. Still, in so many ways as to be is predicated, and anything is truly asserted, it is requisite to consider that we signify the in esse as that of contraries. There is one science. For let A be, there is one science, and B, things contrary to each other. A, then, is present with B, not as if contraries are one science, but because it is true in respect of them to say that there is one science of them. It sometimes occurs, indeed, that the first is predicated of the middle, but the middle not of the third, as if wisdom is science, but wisdom is of good. The conclusion is that science is of good. Hence, good is not wisdom, but wisdom is science. Sometimes, again, the middle is predicated of the third, but the first not of the middle, e.g., if there is a science of every quality or contrary, but good is a contrary and a quality, the conclusion then is that there is a science of good, yet neither good nor quality nor contrary is science, but good is these. Sometimes, again, neither the first is predicated of the middle, nor this of the third, the first indeed being sometimes predicated of the third and sometimes not for instance of whatever there is science there is genus but there is science of good the conclusion is that there is a genus of good yet none of these is predicated of any if nevertheless of what there is science this is genus but there is a science of good the conclusion is that good is genus, hence the first is predicated of the extreme, but there is no predication of each other. In the case of the non in essay, there must be the same manner of assumption, for this thing not being present with this, does not always signify that this is not this, but sometimes that this is not of this, or that this is not with this, as there is not a motion of motion, or generation of generation, but there is a motion and generation of pleasure. Pleasure, therefore, is not generation. Again, there is of laughter a sign, but there is not a sign of a sign, so that laughter is not a sign, and similarly in other cases, wherein the problem is subverted from the genus being in some way referred to it. Moreover, occasion is not opportune time, for to the divinity there is occasion but not opportune time because there is nothing useful to divinity we must take as terms occasion opportune time and divinity but the proposition must be assumed according to the case of the noun since in short we assert this universally that we must always place the terms according to the appellations of the nouns e g man, or good, or contraries, not of man, nor of good, nor of contraries, but we must take propositions according to the cases of each word, since they are either to this as the equal, or of this as the double, or this thing as striking, or seeing, or this one as man, animal, or if the noun falls in any other way, according to the proposition chapter thirty seven rules of reference to the forms of predication for this thing to be with that and for one thing to be truly predicated of another must be assumed in as many ways as the categories are divided the latter must also be taken either in a certain respect or simply moreover either as simple or connected in a similar manner also with regard to the non in esse. These, however, must be better considered and defined.
End of chapter 37 of book 1 of prior analytics recording in memory of mitchell edwards thirty eight of book one of prior analytics by aristotle translated by octavius owen this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by geoffrey edwards chapter thirty eight of propositional iteration and the addition to a predicate whatever is reiterated in the propositions must be annexed to the major and not to the middle term i mean for instance if there should be a syllogism that there is a science of justice quote, because it is good close quote, the expression quote, because it is good close quote, or Quote, in that it is good close quote, must be joined to the major for let a be quote, science that it is good close quote. b quotes good and c quotes justice a then is truly predicated of b since of good there is science that it is good but b is also true of c for justice is what is good thus therefore the solution is made example one of good there is science that it is good justice is good therefore of justice there is science that it is good but if quote, that it is good close quote, be added to b it will not be true for a will indeed be truly predicated of b but it will not be true that b is predicated of c since to predicate of justice good that it is good is false and not intelligible so also it may be shown that the healthy is an object of science in that it is good or that hercoservus is an object of opinion quod its non-entity or that man is corruptible so far as he is sensible for in all superpredications we must annex the repetition to the major term the position of the terms is nevertheless not the same when a thing is syllogistically inferred simply and when this particular thing or in a certain respect or in a certain way for instance i mean as when good is shown to be an object of science and when it is shown to be so because it is good but if it is shown to be an object of science simply we must take quotes, being as the middle term example two every being is an object of science good is being therefore good is an object of science if it is proved that it may be scientifically known to be good a certain being must be taken as the middle for let a be quote, science that it is a certain being close quote. b quote, a certain being close quote. and c quotes, good to predicate then a of b is true for there is science of a certain being that it is a certain being but b is also predicated of c because c is a certain being therefore a will be predicated of c hence there will be science of good that it is good for the expression quote, a certain being close quote, is the sign of peculiar or proper essence if on the other hand quotes, being is set as the middle and being simply and not a certain being is added to the extreme there will not be a syllogism 
that there is a science of good that it is good but that it is being for example let a be science that it is being b being and c good example three of being there is science that it is being good is being therefore of good there is science that it is being in such syllogisms then as are from a part we must clearly take the terms after this manner chapter thirty nine the simplification of terms in the solution of syllogism we must also exchange those which have the same import nouns for nouns and sentences for sentences and a noun and a sentence and always take the noun for the sentence for thus the exposition of the terms will be easier for example if there is no difference in saying that what is supposed is not the genus of what is opined or that what is opined is not anything which may be supposed for the signification is the same instead of the sentence already expressed we must take what may be supposed and what may be opined as terms chapter forty the definite article to be added according to the nature of the conclusion since however it is not the same for pleasure to be good and for pleasure to be the good we must not set the terms alike but if there is a syllogism that pleasure is the good the good must be taken as a term if that it is good good must be taken and so of the rest chapter forty one on the distinction of certain forms of universal predication it is neither in fact nor in word the same thing to assert that a is present with every individual with which b is present and to say that a is present with every individual of what b is present with since there is nothing to prevent b from being with c yet not with every c for instance let b be beautiful but c white if then beautiful is with something white it is true to say that beauty is present with what is white yet not perhaps with everything white if then a is with b but not with everything of which b is predicated neither if b is present with every c nor if it is alone present it is necessary that a should not only not be present with every c but that it should not be present at all but if that of which b is truly predicated with every individual of this a is present it will happen that a will be predicated of every individual of which b is predicated of every individual but if a is predicated of that of which b is universally predicated there is nothing to prevent b from being present with c with not every or with no individual of which a is present therefore in three terms it is evident that the assertion that a is predicated of every individual of which b is predicated signifies that of whatever b is predicated of all these a is predicated also and if b is predicated of every a will also thus be predicated but if it is not predicated of every individual it is not necessary that a should be predicated of every individual still we need not imagine that any absurdity will occur from this exposition for we do not use the expression that this is a particular definite thing but as a geometrician says that this is a foot in length is a straight line and is without breadth though it is not so 
he does not however so use them as if he inferred from these in a word that which is not as a whole to a part and something else in reference to this as a part to a whole from nothing of these can a demonstrator demonstrate wherefore neither is there a syllogism but we use exposition as we do sense when we address a learner since we do not use it so as if it were impossible to be demonstrated without these as we use propositions from which a syllogism is constructed chapter forty two that not all conclusions in the same syllogism are produced through one figure let us not forget that all conclusions in the same syllogism are not produced by one figure but one through this figure and another through that so that clearly we must make the resolutions in the same manner but since not every problem is proved in every figure but arranged in each it is evident from the conclusion in what figure the inquiry must be made chapter forty three of arguments against definition simplified with regard however to arguments against definition and by which a particular thing in the definition is attacked that term must be laid down which is attacked and not the whole definition for it will result that we shall be less disturbed by prolixity e g if we are to show that water is humid potable we must place potable and water as terms chapter forty four of the reduction of hypotheticals and of syllogisms ad impossible we must not endeavour moreover to reduce hypothetical syllogisms for we cannot reduce them from the things laid down since they are not proved syllogistically but are all of them admitted by consent thus if a man supposing that except there is one certain power of contraries there will neither exist one science of them it should afterwards be dialectically proved that there is not one power of contraries for instance of the wholesome and of the unwholesome for the same thing will be wholesome and unwholesome at the same time here it will be shown that there is not one power of all contraries but that it is not a science has not been shown we must yet acknowledge that there is not however by syllogism but by hypothesis wherefore we cannot reduce this but that we may viz that there is not one power for this perhaps was a syllogism but that an hypothesis the same thing happens in the case of syllogisms which infer a consequence per impossible since neither can we analyze these though we may a deduction to the impossible for it is demonstrated by syllogism but the other we cannot for it is concluded from hypothesis they differ nevertheless from the before named because we must in them indeed have admitted some thing previously if we are about to consent as if for example one power of contraries should have been shown and that there was the same science of them now here they admit what they had not allowed previously on account of the evident falsity as if the diameter of a square having been admitted commensurable with the side odd things should be equal to even many others also are concluded from hypothesis which it is requisite to consider and clearly explain what then are the differences of these and in how many ways an hypothetical syllogism is produced we will show hereafter at present let only so much be evident to us that we cannot resolve such syllogisms into figures for what reason we have shown chapter forty five the reduction of syllogisms from one figure to another as many problems as are demonstrated in many figures if they are proved in one syllogism may be referred to another e g a negative in the first may be referred to the second and one in the middle to the first still not all but some only this will appear from the following if a is with no b but b with every c a is with no c 
thus the first figure arises but if the negative is converted there will be the middle for b will be with no a and with every c in the same manner if the syllogism be not universal but particular as if a is with no b but b is with a certain c for the negative being converted there will be the middle figure of syllogisms however in the middle figure the universal will be reduced to the first but only one of the particular for let a be with no b but with every c then by conversion of the negative there will be the first figure since b will be with no a but a with every c now if the affirmative be added to b and the negative to c we must take c as the first term since this is with no a but a is with every b wherefore c is with no b neither will b be with any c for the negative is converted if however the syllogism be particular when the negative is added to the major extreme it will be reduced to the first figure as if a is with no b but with a certain c for by conversion of the negative there will be the first figure since b is with no a but a with a certain c when however the affirmative is joined to the greater extreme it will not be resolved as if a is with every b but not with every c for the proposition a b does not admit conversion nor if it were made would there be a syllogism again not all in the third figure will be resolvable into the first but all in the first will be into the third for let a be with every b but b with a certain c since then a particular affirmative is convertible c will be with a certain b but a was with every b so that there is the third figure also if the syllogism be negative there will be the same result for the particular affirmative is convertible wherefore a will be with no b but with a certain c of the syllogisms in the last figure one alone is not resolvable into the first when the negative is not placed universal all the rest however are resolved for let a and b be predicated of every c c therefore is convertible partially to each extreme wherefore it is present with a certain b so that there will be the first figure if a is with every c but c with a certain b and if a is with every c but b with a certain c the reasoning is the same for b reciprocates with c but if b is with every c and a with a certain c b must be taken as the first term for b is with every c but c with a certain a so that b is with a certain a since however the particular is convertible a will also be with a certain b if the syllogism be negative when the terms are universal we must assume in like manner for let b be with every c but a with no c wherefore c will be with a certain b but a with no c so that c will be the middle term likewise if the negative is universal but the affirmative particular for 
a will be with no c but c with a certain b if however the negative be taken as particular there will not be a resolution e g if b is with every c but a not with a certain c for by conversion of the proposition b c both propositions will be partial it is clear then that in order mutually to convert these figures the minor premise must be converted in either figure for this being transposed a transition is effected of syllogisms in the middle figure one is resolved and the other is not resolved into the third for when the universal is negative there is a resolution for if a is with no b but with a certain c both similarly reciprocate with a wherefore b is with no a but c with a certain a the middle then is a when however a is with every b and is not with a certain c there will not be resolution since neither proposition after conversion is universal syllogisms also of the third figure may be resolved into the middle when the negative is universal as if a is with no c but b is with some or with every c for c will be with no a but will be with a certain b but if the negative be particular there will not be a resolution since a particular negative does not admit conversion we see then that the same syllogisms are not resolved in these figures which were not resolved into the first figures and that when syllogisms are reduced to the first figure these only are concluded per impossible how therefore we must reduce syllogisms and that the figures are mutually resolvable appears from what has been said chapter forty six of the quality and signification of the definite and indefinite and privative there is some difference in the construction or subversion of a problem whether we suppose the expressions quote, not to be this particular thing close quote, and quote, to be not this particular thing close quote, have the same or different signification e g quote, not to be white close quote, and quote, to be not white close quote. now they do not signify the same thing neither of the expression quote, to be white close quote, is the negation quote, to be not white close quote, but quote, not to be white close quote. and the reason of this is as follows the expression quote, he is able to walk close quote, is similar to quote, he is able not to walk close quote. the expression quote, it is white close quote, to quote, it is not white close quote. and quote, he knows good close quote. to quote, he knows what is not good close quote. for these quote, he knows good close quote. or quote, he has a knowledge of good close quote. does not at all differ neither quote, he is able to walk close quote. and quote, he has the power of walking close quote. wherefore also the opposites quote, he is not able to walk close quote. and quote, he has not the power of walking close quote. do not differ from each other if then quote, he has not the power of walking close quote, signifies the same as quote, he has the power of not walking close quote. these will be at one and the same time present with the same for the same person is able to walk and not to walk and is cognizant of good and of what is not good but affirmation and negation being opposites are not at the same time present with the same thing 
since therefore it is not the same thing quote, not to know good close quote, and quote, to know what is not good close quote, neither is it the same thing to be quote, not good close quote, and quote, not to be good close quote. since of things having analogy if the one is different the other also differs neither is it the same to be quote, not equal close quote, and quote, not to be equal close quote. for to the one namely quote, to that which is not equal close quote, something is subjected and this is the unequal but to the other there is nothing subjected wherefore quote, not everything is equal or unequal close quote, but quote, everything is equal or not equal close quote. besides this expression quote, it is not white wood close quote, and this quote, not is white wood close quote, are not present together at the same time for if it is quote, wood not white close quote, it will be wood but quote, what is not white wood close quote, is not of necessity quotes wood so that it is clear that of quote, it is good close quote, the negation is not quote, it is not good close quote. if then of every one thing either the affirmation or negation is true if there is not negation it is evident that there will in some way be affirmation but of every affirmation there is negation and hence of this the negation is quote, it is not not good close quote. they have this order indeed with respect to each other let to be good be a not to be good b to be not good c under b not to be not good d under a with every individual then either a or b will be present and each with nothing which is the same and c or d with every individual and with nothing which is the same and with whatever c is present b must necessarily be present with every individual for if it is true to say that quote, a thing is not white close quote, it is also true to say that quote, not it is white close quote. for a thing cannot at one and the same time be white and not white or be wood not white and be white wood so that unless there is affirmation negation will be present c however is not always consequent to b for in short what is not wood will not be white wood on the contrary with whatever a is present d also is present with every individual for either c or d will be present as however quote, to be not white close quote, and quote, to be white close quote, cannot possibly co-subsist d will be present for of what is white we may truly say that it is not not white yet a is not predicated of every d for in short we cannot truly predicate a of what is not wood namely to assert that it is white wood so that d will be true and a will not be true namely that it is white wood it appears also that a and c are present with nothing identical though b and d may be present with the same privatives also subsist similarly to this position with respect to attributes for let equal be a not equal b unequal c not unequal d in many things also with some of which the same thing is present and not with others the negative may be similarly true that quote, 
not all things are white close quote, or quote, that not each thing is white close quote, but quote, that each thing is not white close quote, or quote, that all things are not white close quote, is false so also of this affirmation quote, every animal is white close quote, the negation is not quote, every animal is not white close quote, for both are false but this quote, not every animal is white close quote. since however it is clear that quote, is not white close quote, signifies something different from quote, not is white close quote, and that one is affirmation and the other negation it is also clear that there is not the same mode of demonstrating each for example quote, whatever is an animal is not white close quote, or quote, happens not to be white close quote, and that we may truly say quote, it is not white close quote, for this is quote, to be not white close quote. still there is the same mode as to it is true to say it is white or not white for both are demonstrated constructively through the first figure since the word quotes true is similarly arranged with quotes is for of the assertion quote, it is true to say it is white close quote, the negation is not quote, it is true to say it is not white close quote, but quote, it is not true to say it is white close quote. but if it is true to say quote, whatever is a man is a musician or is not a musician close quote, we must assume that quote, whatever is an animal is either a musician or is not a musician close quote, and it will be demonstrated but that quote, whatever is a man is not a musician close quote, is shown negatively according to the three modes stated in short when a and b are so as that they cannot be simultaneously in the same thing but one of them is necessarily present to every individual and again c and d likewise but a follows c and does not reciprocate d will also follow b and will not reciprocate and a and d may be with the same thing but b and c cannot in the first place then it appears from this that d is consequent to b for since one of c d is necessarily present with every individual but with what b is present c cannot be because it introduces with itself a but a and b cannot consist with the same d is evidently a consequent again since c does not reciprocate with a but c or d is present with every it happens that a and d will be with the same thing but b and c cannot because a is consequent to c for an impossibility results wherefore it appears plain that neither does b reciprocate with d because it would happen that a is present together with d sometimes also it occurs that we are deceived by such an arrangement of terms because of our not taking opposites rightly one of which must necessarily be with every individual as if a and b cannot be simultaneously with the same but it is necessary that the one should be with what the other is not and again c and d in like manner but a is consequent to every c for b will happen necessarily to be with that with which d is which is false for let the negative of a b which is f be assumed 
and again the negative of c d and let it be h it is necessary then that either a or f should be with every individual since either affirmation or negation must be present again also either c or h for they are affirmation and negation and a is by hypothesis present with everything with which c is so that h will also be present with whatever f is again since of f b one is with every individual and so also one of h d and h is consequent to f b will also be consequent to d for this we know if then a is consequent to c b will also follow d but this is false since the sequence was the reverse in things so subsisting for it is not perhaps necessary that either a or f should be with every individual neither f nor b for f is not the negative of a since of quotes, good the negation is quote, not good close quote, and quote, it is not good close quote, is not the same with quote, it is neither good nor not good close quote. it is the same also of c d for the assumed negatives are two end of chapter forty six and end of book one of prior analytics recording in memory of mitchell edwards